tubers. Well, what are we working on today? We are trying to get this flywheel off of this crank. So this is what I came up with. I'm going to show you in a second here. I um, I had a couple, uh, you know, like most guys in the shop, they got a, they have a few um, pullers, you know, three jaw, two jaw. So I'm using those. I'm using a two jaw puller. And if you can see in here, there's a gap between. There's a reasonable gap now, but there's a very small gap between the commutator and this and this uh, flywheel. Now I don't want to break the flywheel, so I don't want to pound on anything. I want to be really gentle with things. So as I did is I took, I made up an extension uh, for my puller, and the end of the jaws, I ground them down. Uh, you, know, you can see that's what they look like now, and what they looked like before, you know, was that. So I took quite a bit off. You know, I figured there'd still be enough strength in there somewhere to. To be able to pull on it, but I was kind of stuck for a way to, to way to hook between that commutator and that and the flywheel hub. You know, you don't want to be pulling on the flywheel, on the fins of the flywheel, and snap something off. You know, especially when you get a flywheel that's in that good a shape, you sure don't want to you sure don't want to screw it up at this stage of the game. So, I hooked up my my puller and um, used a clamp uh, C clamp pliers to keep the the jaws of the puller really tight to the hub there and, and down nice and deep in there and started you know slowly pulling on it put lots of oil lots of uh lots of penetrant in there and um and it's working its way out it's uh it's probably moved i'm going to say a, a quarter inch so far so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to clean up the shaft so it doesn't have any impediments when it's coming off the rest of the way what i did notice is <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing that this is not the correct pin so that you get your flywheel pin your pin goes right through your I'm guessing it does I don't know for sure maybe somebody can tell me if it's supposed to but it goes right through that that shaft if it's not supposed to no big deal I'll uh, I can fill the shaft and, and regrind it nice and smooth again but this is what somebody had in there hmm. that definitely is not a pin and I, I can't imagine it. that's what they originally had was a was a was a like a stove bolt with a you know threaded stove bolt that just doesn't make any sense so that it's probably somebody made that up maybe they had the flywheel off once before and just jam that in there <coughs> excuse me just about over that cold almost gone now anyway we're not gonna be replacing anything with that so that's where we're at now so we'll uh i'll get back to you as soon as we get this flywheel off and and uh, hopefully with success well, we're back. Well, that was successful. All we have left now is we're going to uh, have commutators on there pretty tough. So we'll hook the same jaw puller on the commutator and hope we don't bust that commutator. Crankshaft <clears throat> is your uh, connecting rod pin, connecting rod uh, low counterweight, and that's your shaft. Um, your flywheel rides. Uh, uh, about this area right here and then there would have been pulley here somewhere and you can tell that there obviously was a pulley they kind of rode pretty tight and maybe wobbly there's a bit of a groove cut there in the shaft maybe the other side of the pulley was there or it might have been there you know, you probably see that here maybe here here almost like somebody cut it with a hacksaw but I don't, I don't think I'm gonna be that stupid so <laughs> so that would be where the edges of the pulley would have rode and of course you got a keyway that runs through there and um, hmm, maybe a pin something or another a, uh, you can see somebody tightened down a, uh, a key maybe a little hex key tighten that down the shaft should have been tightening it down well you know maybe there wasn't a key maybe the hex or that little uh, tightening screw should have been in that channel or somewhere and it ended up finally over here as they're maybe trying to align the motor with uh, with the pulley on the um, on the washing machine. Yeah, anything's possible. That's just kind of the conclusions you can you can get to when you're when you're looking it over. Some high spots for from where someone was kind of beating at it a bit. I had to uh, use a file and lightly take down some of the uh, the high so high spots where someone was beating away at it there and, and bending the 
bang the, the shaft, but uh, it goes on pretty reasonable. Now I don't want to take too much away because then I'll end up with a sloppy uh, bearing fit on the uh, on the outside of the um, uh, of the outside of the uh, the hub. So that's your brass your brass bushing. You got two, one at each end. A little bit of a dead space in the middle there. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe a little bit. There is. You can see the um, the hole. Right here. Let me, let me just turn on my uh, light. Be right back. Got that light on. I just wanted you to be able to get a, a look in there. That's your passageway. That accepts. So here you have your grease cup. I cleaned up those threads. And uh, it sits in there. Runs right through. And pushes the grease down onto the shaft. Obviously it, you know, it kind of runs up on the shaft. Like so. And bumps against that lobe. Uh, the other uh, the other side. Oh, let's try and get a look at this. It's really tough. Not much light and some pretty dark little areas in there. Okay, there it is. So you got a hole there, which would have been you know so that means you could have put your bush at either end and there's a little channel cut in there. So there is no channel at the other end that is left. Uh, maybe slight, just slight, towards the inside of that uh, inside of that hub. Anyway, those bushings got pressed out. We'll put some new ones in there. So when I come back, we should have that commutator pulled off, and we'll have this hub cleaned up. You can see that. So this would have sat this way on the motor. This being the top up here, and then the bottom down here. These. Um, Connections are unsupported. They don't support themselves against I'll show you this here. This would go like so Against the uh, crankcase So the problem is so you're, you're supported up top, but you're not supported on the bottom And if somebody over tightened that well because it was cast, you know snap and that'll be it So as far as I understand there are actually very few of these that don't have that aren't that don't have the tabs really welded on them This one's kind of a boomered up job I'll probably, I'll probably clean that up so it looks reasonable. I don't want to take too much away. I don't want to take a bunch of strength away from it and have it do it all over again. Um, same thing over on this side. But it looks like they did, they probably used the original tabs. And then they kind of, I don't know if they filed it or ground it away, but they did a reasonable job, I guess. A gasket sits there anyway, so it seals it up pretty good. <coughs> and uh, that's your flywheel. No cracks, no breaks, no welds, and there is, um, boy, I, I, it sure looks green to me, but others may say it's blue. I just don't have any clue. I'll spend some time and clean that up tonight, and maybe I'll get you another picture of that. But uh, anyway, it's nice to have them, one that hasn't been welded up on. So Maybe if somebody knows, there's a little cast mark there. Somebody can tell me what that little cast mark is. I sure don't know. I think there, you know, there's a heavier mark there. Maybe it was a balance point to the flywheel. That's all I can figure. I don't see any, you know, on modern flywheels they would, they would drill holes around the hub to lighten it in spots, or you know. But eh, maybe that's what that's for. I don't know. Anyway, catch you in a bit. All right, tubers, this is it for the night. I, uh, did the whole crankshaft uh, hub and flywheel tonight. That'll be it for tonight. Okay, where are we at? So, the hub. Well, hub mount. I don't know what you call it. That's what I call it. it flanges up to the crankcase. Kind of talked about that already. Anyway, clean it all up. You can see where somebody has, has uh, removed the flywheel once before and also the commutator. It's kind of funny, you know, when you take the take the rust off of stuff, you start finding little evidence marks of things. So here, obviously, somebody used a uh, uh, maybe a chisel, a screwdriver, who knows what, and you see the same marks right here on the commutator. Somebody's scratching across there, <laughs> and an evidence and some evidence of an old of an old repair. 
maybe they're prying away at and kind of split that commutator apart and uh, use a nail. I kind of smooth that out, but you know, I think I'd better remove that before it grabs onto something and, and tears the pickup up. But anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. Kind of funny the repairs that you see. Anyway, got this working properly. Oh, I also um, took off all that nasty solder and stuff they used. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, they had this little brass pin kind of soldered soldered onto there and then they're using using this nut on there and I'm tightening the uh, the completion wire onto there for the ignition and originally this commutator it's supposed to I'm just kind of showing you here it's supposed to butt up against that shoulder and then you use your let's see if I can uh, actually hold on Let me get this on so this is how it's supposed to sit and then to adjust the timing on the motor, you move the commutator. I still have that pretty snug on there, but I cleaned it out quite a bit. I didn't want it too loose. I didn't want it flopping around and rattling around. And so I left it kind of a, an interference fit. But that sits against the shoulder. And see, originally, this is your, your lock. Your lock... Uh, bolt and then that holds your commutator in place so it can't turn and change the timing you don't have to crank it down really hard just you know just snug and it won't move it's already snug as it is so but you move that off you make your adjustment I don't have that snug up to that shoulder I will in a bit but then there you go so you move your timing okay guys so this would be your completed assembly um, I tapped out that hole by the way after I clean up all the solder off of it and I'll put a little screw there and that's where your wire will connect to for your ignition circuit and um, what else? okay then of course you know, your flywheel spins around and around this is bolted to the motor and you know, it's, it seems fairly obvious it does sound a little rough I'll probably run some memory over that shaft just to smooth it out or maybe it's the bearing I'm not sure which bearing is loose I think it's the uh, the inner bearing is a little bit loose. Or sorry, the inner um, uh, the inner bushing. Uh, but the shaft itself is a little rough, just obviously from somebody banging against it. And, but it's really not too bad. So that's it for tonight. Um, the, the color. This is what I come up with after I washed that flywheel down and did the best I could. I didn't want to remove any paint, so I didn't get really abrasive with it. Just clean it up. What we have is a very dark, dark green, almost a dark blue, greeny blue. Uh, probably tough to see it through the camera here, but that's what we got. Anyway, that's it for our night tubers.